Welcome back, honey cakes. Crypto's juiciest news coming right at you. This is the current state of altcoins against Bitcoin. This is a ratio. You see, we are tumbling down. But as we have discovered already with my many, many videos for you, that is not the full picture because there has been altcoin dispersion. So everybody is concentrated and focused in one sector. Can you guess it? Yes, memes. Memes are getting all the mind share. They are continuing to push forward. Some of them have been blowing up already. You can see fantastic recoveries. But for the overall altcoin market, we need this thing to be turning around just to reflect that things are going the other way. So right now, it's actually healthy, I guess, for the whole industry. Bitcoin has to keep continuing to take stage. And then everyone's convinced there will be no rotation. And then that's actually when, uh, when the big, biggest rotation comes. Now, friends, there's a weekly candle here that's printed for Bitcoin, okay? And everybody is concerned because we have rejected the top up here. Maybe, okay, maybe there's going to be a sell the news event on the US election day, which is what everyone's waiting for. It's going to be super quiet until then, and then the market's going to have to figure out what to do. But the biggest news of the day, let's go through, friends. So actually, let's start with the most important. We'll get to a bit a bit later. Peanut the squirrel. Peanut the squirrel, friends. Um, so this is a Richard Hart post, which we'll cover. So peanut the squirrel down here in the bottom left. Peanut the squirrel. I think the Democrats euthanized her in New York, and it's gone viral. The owners come out, him and his wife, she's crying because it was like separated the family for seven years. Someone reported it, and they came and take it out. Also, Elon starts going against them as well. This is like, it's one of those things where you're just like, well, this is now the nail in the coffin, isn't it? And as soon, as soon as I saw this, I looked at it, I'm like, I bet there's already 10 meme coins made about it. And yeah, there is. There is a meme coin, friends. It went up in a day, went to like 80 million market cap or something ridiculous. Uh, I think someone made $1.6 million from it. Uh, a lot of people will say these eyes are always insiders. To be honest, they're not always insiders. You're just looking at the one lottery ticket winner, like a lottery of a lottery. That's it. Yeah, okay, there's 80,000 people that participate, one one in that. Okay. Probably more if you add up all the other meme coins. Okay. So these aren't, these, they're not always insiders, um, but you just never know. But like they have tools, they have an edge. They have an edge. So that's why these people, friends, they don't share information on Twitter. These short term trading guys, they have wallets and, and they have things that they track and they hang out with their, they, they hang out on Discord with their friends. So they're all tracking all this stuff and they know like, oh, certain wallets are are aping into this and they're associated with other wallets that usually have bigger communities. So they go in and they hold, okay? Actually, I saw one comment from somebody who replied to one of these. Uh, they said, when these people trade coins that they have no edge in, uh, they, they have extremely terrible results. They just keep losing. Okay, so maybe they are kind of insiders, but is it really insider? Like you just have informational edge. It's key information asymmetry, you know? Some people might say, friends, it, let's say let's say Bitcoin's 250K next year. I hope it is. People will call you and me insiders because they're like, oh, you were watching my friend Somi on YouTube and he had all the highest value content in crypto for you. You knew to watch him. And you're like, well, he just came across it, right? So um, it, it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. What matters is the, the game that we're playing and we're playing long-term game, long-term uh, value creation. We'll get more on that later. In other news as well, okay, friends, a gentleman named Dankrad Feist, he's an Ethereum developer. He is stepping down from Igon Layer um, from his advisory role, and he's going back to Ethereum. So he's going to do no more long, no longer uh, the conflict of interest. He's rejecting millions of dollars apparently for that, but, like, you're an Ethereum dev, bro. You'll, you're pretty set, you know what I mean? So uh, just showing you, friends, that, um, if, see, the price matters, bro. The, uh, no, I knew that they're full of poop. They were full of poop the, whole, poop the whole time. And they, they um, look, where's this all coming from? Okay, ETH BTC is getting obliterated. It's literally get, like falling to the floor. They're all nervous and scared. It's broken all the levels, coming down now. In 2022, so when they were all flying high, when they were all flying high here, when it was strong, ETH BTC was strong and they did the merge, which is here. This is bear market stuff, okay? This is still bear market. Look, 2022. You're going to like, let me take you back, okay? Um, this is why everybody was super confident, friends. We had, we had, here is FTX. FTX exploded and ETH BTC was near its bull market high here. It was only 12% down. You see? So everyone thought, oh, wow, we're going strong and FTX exploded. But that's crazy, man, because FTX uh, made the bottom for Bitcoin and yeah, it, it sent this thing down as well. You see that after the merge. And, and during this time, 
there are a couple of Ethereum guys. They uh they unfollowed me because I was saying, hey, Ethereum's doing really well now, and I love Ethereum and it's great. I go, but uh, decentralization is just a meme. I was saying that, and a, a lot of people got pip really upset. It's true though. It's true. Of course, it's just a meme. It is just a meme. People don't give a crap about that. They care about the price. Now, but when they heard that, they go, oh, you're a hex guy. You, you, you like Hex as one of like the 50,000 coins that you like. Oh, you like Hex, so they'll just unfollow, you know? But I'm not going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shut my mouth. It's true, man. It's true. Now, how the tables have turned, Ethereum goes down so far, obviously, I wish it wouldn't, to prove my point. I wish it didn't do this, but it did. It did. Look, the ETH BTC ratio went down so far. And remember, friends, it's not Ethereum's USD price. It's the ratio price, okay? So that's showing you how bad sentiment is, okay? Because look at this. If you look at Ethereum's price, you check it out. This is healthy, bro. This is a health. If you show this to a stock market guy, they're like, oh, I'd love to buy this. This is a higher low. I'd love to buy it. But we all know what Ethereum's really, what their real plan is, friends. Their real plan, they want to flip Bitcoin, don't they? Of course, they want to flip Bitcoin, uh, but they don't talk about it. Why don't they talk about it? Because they're rank two, Bitcoin's number one, and they're not about price. They're meant to optimize for independent neutrality. And, oh, don't worry about the price and all this stuff. No, 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 a bunch of BS. That was so counter to what Richard Hart was saying years prior. They'll say, you only care about the price, dude. And even I was coming out, I was saying this all the time. I was like, well, if Ethereum was down 99%, I don't think Vitalik would feel too good about talking about decentralization and stuff. I think everyone would be like, screw you. I lost all my money because of you. Screw this decentralization. Start catering to product market fit to make basically the uh, the metaphoric door of the community open to allow more people in. So by the way, friends, this this uh, Dankrad guy, um, he's also joined by another guy, Justin Drake. He also left the Igon layer ad advisory team, advisory friends. It's VC insiders, dude. There's not enough retail. So that, look, it's, this is, by the way, this is why Soilana went up. Soilana is meant to be the anti-VC stuff, but it has other cabals with the meme coiners, okay? Uh, Pulse Chain's a blue ocean. But friends, when they talk about VCs and researching stuff, it's all Ethereum people. It's all Ethereum-centric, okay? It's been poisoned by it. And, and why is it? It's because, if you look at it from a third eye, from a bird's eye view, um, it's because Ethereum, they're very in love with following the law. They're like, oh, I want to follow the law. I'm going to be so so neutral, so independent. We follow all the rules of the law. So when they have the corrupt SEC stuff, they, um, they'll they attack them on one hand, but they'll agree with them on the other. And they'll say, oh, okay, we're going to follow your fundraising things for coins. So what we'll do is we're just going to like basically keep 95% of the tokens for ourselves, and then we'll we'll give it to retail. Unfortunately, um, they, they get $2 billion valuation starting, and there's no product market fit. And now Ethereum as a whole is suffering for it, you know? But you, you it's a, it's look. It's, I don't want to say the word blame, but this is a side effect where you have a culture that is leaderless. You have a culture where they don't have any spines. Of course, they have hunchbacks. They don't have nice fluffy slippers, like right here. All right, where are your fluffy slippers, sir? Where are they? These are the Highland bulls. The very very cute Highland bulls. They, they don't have any of that. They have um, they have code and research and stuff, and that's not enough to carry you, bro. It's not. You need more than that. And that's why you've been seeing Ethereum Vitalik, right? They call, Come back, Vitalik, please take your gloves off, right? You're, you're asking him to be a fighter. Luckily for us, he's a 4,000 IQ alien. I've also got some amazing news, friends. So Uncle Bobby has shared his four-year cycle belief, and it's actually bullish. So actually, let's, let's cover that right now. Let's go to Uncle Bobby. So Uncle Bobby, he has a tweet here. Um, Uncle Bobby's tweet. Bitcoin doesn't care about all the narratives. It's now starting year three of the four-year cycle where almost all of the gains since inception have occurred. Okay, ignore the noise. So this is his chart here. Don't focus too much on these box charts, friends. The top of the box is around 250K. It's nice if we hit there. It's nice. But look, you got to remember, man, like Uncle Bobby, friends, I, I, I empathize with him as well um, because he, he always says in his videos, he goes, guys, I have these range targets. Don't focus on the number. It's about the price. It's not the number. He goes, they can stop anyway. Markets can go higher. Markets can go lower. Okay, so I always have that opinion as well. However, everyone still remembers when he had like a 300, 400K target or 160K plus in 2021. Like I think it was like three, 400K and then it stops at just 60. And then he basically changes his mind when Bitcoin was about 40K. Okay, so, so you got to remember that, right? So I'll just, I'll, I'll walk you through that, friends, because that's, that's what I've been preparing you for this whole, this whole time, okay? If we go to Bitcoin, I remember we we're all looking at everyone's like, well, Uncle Bobby's got like a, um, it could be like a, literally a 400K Bitcoin, right? All the way up here, 400K Bitcoin. And then it's, 
or at least, friends, at least like 250k back then, 250, 200k up here. What happens is it stops at 60 and then it reverses back down to 40. And he's like, you know what? I'm actually all out. I'm getting out. The cycle's done. So you see that? So all that cheering, all that hoping where you think Bitcoin's going to hit. Actually, I'll show you how close it is on a log chart. Okay, but the log chart doesn't do it justice, does it? Because you got to see the real numbers of disappointment here. I mean, you got to think about this. Like everyone's expecting, okay, that we're going to blow off to like three, 400. Everyone's expecting that. Instead, what happens is it stops here. And then he's like, you know what? We've actually got to get out. It's all over. Okay, it's all over. By this point here, by the way, altcoins were down 70%. 60 to, you know, 50, 60, 70%. So just look at that deviation difference. So um, that's why... Uh, even he, even he left it left it open for it to occur like that, and but, but still people remember that they remember these price targets and stuff, and people will latch onto this. But you have to navigate these yourself, and you probably find out like a good lesson for life is uh learn how to manage your own expectations. If you keep your expectations low, you can get through life a lot 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 easier. When you keep your expectations high, you know for a lot of things, man, it just like you just it's full of disappointments, and it, your game it's not to be about expectations. Your only expectations would be on yourself to handle it the best. That's what you should be uh, thinking about. And by the way, it is very, very, um, oh, by the way, shout out to Mr. Dookie, Dookie of Boozy. It is time to be bullish. So yes, yes, sir. Look, it is true with the stats. Like I think Plan B showed something like 85% um, uh, of all the gains of crypto, 90%, almost all the gains just come in that fourth year, which is where we are now, okay? He said the year three out of four because the way you time it is you start the cycle on the bottom, just to let you know. So actually, let's go back to the Bitcoin chart, the cycle started at the low, okay? That's it. So you basically, you go up, you go up too much and then you're done and that's it. That's like cycle done, okay? So you don't like, the cycle doesn't end at this very, very top. That's why it can like do left translator. So let's actually go and look at our, our one. Yeah, it can, if we're gonna, so he expects a cycle low by the end, like somewhere here, okay? So the cycle is gonna end here, remember? So we've got, we're going to do year three and year four, but you don't know how it's going to look like, okay? Is it going to be left translated and then you just do this? That's one, okay? That, that's what that's pretty much what we'll, like, that's one of the scenarios. Or are we going to do a scenario where you just have a normal one year up, one year down, you know? Or can it do something where it does a right translated, right? Right translated, but then like it's pretty much over. That, that, that'll be the bear, bear, bear scenario, okay? Where things, it goes up and up and up and up and up until like it eventually comes back down around these. But this means you're in what they call like a secular bear market where the next time it makes its cycles, let's say 2028, it doesn't even make a new high. It stops around here and then it comes back down for that cycle. Okay, so I just showed you three of these scenarios, right? But that's why Uncle Bobby was saying, <clears throat> and everyone was saying, this is if... Crypto is like a commodity, and this is Bitcoin's 16-year cycle completion. It's the final one. And these 16-year cycles, it's a, it's a long, long, long 16-year bull market. That's why we're always open for this uh, for this extreme left-translated cycle that we're waiting for. But, you know, a lot of you ask, hey, what happened to Dark Prophecies? It's still on. Well, here's the thing. We got everything about the Dark Prophecy right, but there's no altcoin euphoria. There's none. This year, altcoins, that's why, like, that's why, look, that's why I love you, you love me. We are one happy family. When I show you this others BTC, okay, look at this. Okay, this is not euphoria. Okay, others BTC, it's a ratio, friends. I've introduced you to ratio. So if you look on the surface and you see Peppy, meme coins, dog with hat, okay, if you just see them, you think, oh, end of times, end of times. There's this meme coin speculation. What's this junk going on? That's what you think. However, if you look at the ratios, okay, you can see, wait a minute, this is not end of times, bro. The whole industry is down. The whole industry is down. Basically, it's like you're judging a whole city. Let's say there's a city of, uh, let's say there's New York, to 20 million people. And then you go to someone's underground apartment and they're like, there's an underground gambling casino there and there's like 100 people inside. Okay, you're judging a whole city by there's just 100 people and them gambling. You're like, oh, this must be the biggest bull market of your lives. There's no cost of living problem because there's 100 people gambling down in the basement. And also the Bitcoin dominance chart is a ratio as well. Okay, it's a bit ratio of Bitcoin to everything else. You see how this is going up. This <clears throat> this does not mean there's been an extreme amount of euphoria, right? This is this is health. This is a healthy part. And by the way, healthy means buy as well. I want to show you this chart from Blockchain Backer. So he shows the stonk market, friends. 
This is the Russell 2000. See the red line? The red line is the Russell 2000. And the uh, overlay line is pretty much Bitcoin. As you, as you can see, look at this. Okay. They go up together. Here comes bull market. They go up together, bull market. They go up together, bull market. And now we are waiting for this period here. Look at this time period. Three years, seven months. Three years, 10 months. Three years, 11 months. Now, why is it taking longer and longer for for um, for the, the bull market to really, really kick off that euphoria? It's because of the halvening. The halvening is not exactly four years. The halvening is 3.8 years or whatever. Okay, so it's like three years and 10 months apart. So... Every time we have the halvening, it's earlier and earlier of the year. But we have to get beyond September of the year, you know? So that's pretty much, uh, that, that explains why it's taking longer and longer and longer. Also, I, I think I looked up um, the halvening in 2028 will be like February or March. So that's going to be painful. It's like you have the halvening in Feb and like you got to wait all the way to September to finally we get rid of that poopy September for us to continue, okay? So that's why it's happening. But also... It's showing you the halvening isn't the reason for the cycles. It's not actually the reason for the cycles because where the halvening happens doesn't impact anything. It's it's a four year global liquidity cycle. That's actually the um that's the whole uh cycle that's dictating everything in a macro level. Shout out to my friend Marky Decrypto. I love the way you are real. Don't send us to leverage trading to destroy our lives and always zoom out. Other YouTubers have daily bipolar clickbait headlines and they wonder why retail aren't invested. Yes. So leverage trading, friends, look, leverage trading is good for, you got to, there's an asterisk, for the top three out of 100, pretty much. That's it. It's great for the top three out of 100. Top three to five out of 100. Most people aren't that. And it's PVP. So there are losers. There are losers. Okay. When you are playing long term, there are zero losers if you wait long enough. You see, just got to wait. You just have to do nothing. Just wait. Now, easier said than done, right? Look at the past three years. Like, horrific. Ah, but that's it. That's it. That's the truth. The truth is, if you just wait. Now, here's the thing. When you trade, you're not retiring in a year. You are waiting as well. You will have a trading career of like six years, seven years, okay? And by the way, longer than that. And then people start to lose their edge. You see that? So that's why if you, if you reverse engineer it, you go, wait, if I'm going to be trading for the next 10 years, because that's why everyone makes a mistake, right? Every single trader does this mistake. Friends, I did it when, when I was prop trading, okay? We all thought every year we we're going to get better and we were going to make more money and that our skill would improve such that you could always make more money. But well, most people were wrong. 95% were wrong. So you realize that it's not actually about your skill most of the time. It's the market you trade and the strategy you have with the edge around. There's a lot of, there's other factors out here, okay? Yeah, there is skill, of course, involved. But I'm telling you, like, you can have the greatest skill in the world, but if you're trading like a five-tick range in, his, in like very, very too thick, uh, very thick liquidity liquidity bonds, you, you're you going to make way less money returns than somebody who's trading like a new market where there's a lot of like irrational players who don't know what they're doing. And so if you run that out, most people under it, they completely underestimate how long that will take to retire. So as for a trading career, friends, everybody's still trading after 10 to 15 years, okay? But like, I, look, friends, I did this, man. I, it was the, the hardest thing in my life was unlearning trading. It was, well, I'm still, friends, I still know how to trade, but unlearning the temptation to just click out the things up in a week, the things up in a day, the things up in four hours, friends. I was trading one minute candles, man, one minute, five minutes. I was a day trader. So that was the toughest thing, but it's also the most rewarding thing because once I finally understood, I'm like, why does it work long term? Why do these things go long term? Why, 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 why? And I finally figured all of it out. That's why I give you this highest value content in crypto. And then no matter how you spun it, friends, you get an office of traders, okay? You grab these people, there's like this, there's 20 kids. Yeah, okay, two of them might be around in five years, okay? But let's say all of them are around in 15 years, okay? Let's say let's say all of them are around in 15 years. Uh, what I actually found is with investing, you are better off working for like three years, okay? So this guy's trade, one guy's trading, the other guy just works. He DCAs super aggressively into investing long-term, super aggressively as much as he can for three years. And then he just does nothing. He just invests it, okay? That guy who is throwing in that investment, the compounding over time blows most of the trader's returns, blows them, and you get passive income. So, and by the way, you get to see long enough time periods where you get big, big crashes and dips the opportunity to get in as well. So once I finally computed all these numbers, I realized, oh my gosh, 
nothing beats this game, nothing. But it's crypto, man. It's crypto. Crypto won't be here forever. So people are only going to learn this at the very, very end when it's too late. And now, friends, we're going to play some nice Pumpy G music. Watch that yield curve, man. You got to watch out for that yield curve. And what do I mean by watch out? I don't know. It's just if it goes down, just, just you already know. Don't do this turbo leverage. Don't just be care just be careful, man. Just be careful. If the U.S. economy data keeps going bad, okay, you never know, man. Friends, Trump might give it like a one year of resurgence, and then they have to, and then twenty twenty six to some sort of recession later. By the way, what I just drew then, if the yield curve like it uninverts, but then quickly goes back to inversion, that stalls us. Uh, time for the four year cycle to repeat. You got to remember, friends. Also, shout out to the Ditto community from the Poker Center. They make a lot of these cute, cute pictures. Total crypto is only 2.5 trillion. It's actually less than that. So, gold's 18 trillion ish, man. 16, 18 trillion. Dude, like, we're so small. World stocks are 140 trillion. Like, look, look at these numbers, man. We are just way too low for crypto. Way, way, way too low. So, even though, I'm um, like, there's, we're always, uh, um, we're always like worried about this uh, this bull market and this anxiety. I look at those numbers and I'm like, man, uh, how can I be bearish? I just can't. Also, I've got a lovely comment here, friends, from Ghost of Stakamoto, Satoshi Stakamoto. This is incorrect. Bitcoin is 1.38 trill. Everything else is 1.1 trill, quote, uh, cope. So he's a Bitcoin maxi. Uh, shout out to Mr. Tangent. Mr. Tangent replied as well. That's a hell of a lot of cope. He's just joking, friends. So I write, you proved my point even more. Thank you. So we just thank you for making the numbers look even better. That's, um, ah, man. Look, don't worry. Don't worry. Bitcoin's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. I'm really, like, friends, do you, do you, have you met anybody in the street? Do you think they give one truck about decentralization? Do you think they care about waiting four hours to move a JPEG on the chain? No. Okay, they want to make money and they want to make money fast. They want to come, they're going to come in and ape. Okay, so a little secret I've been keeping from you. When I refer to non believers, okay, I've got to start preparing you for this. Non believers are going to put in way more money than you. They're going to come in. You're not going to, they're not non believers, friends. Um, they're going to, they're going to demonstrate to you they believe harder than you. So it should go higher. Like maybe you put in five grand into something. Yeah, there's people going to come in with like $150,000 borrowed money chucking into things. That's what happens at the tops, man. That's what happens in that, that tops and they make quick, fast money. So that's why it's super contrarian when this appears. And I'm saying there's a lot of non-believers around. They're throwing in 300K. And you're like, wait a minute. How is somebody who throws in $300,000, how is he a non-believer? But the guy who throws in a shitty little lottery ticket, how is he a believer? Because... It's not about the allocation of the US dollar units. It's about when you get in. The cycle. It doesn't matter how much they put in. Okay. They're not a true believer. You understand? A true believer in, in the cycle of that, that period of time. The believer, they say, like, I'll show you. Let's look at Pulse Chain price, friends. A believer is, okay, Corrupt SEC does a bogus attack on Richard Hart. This thing drops 66%, okay, 67%. And I'm down here saying we're cheap, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. That is a believer, man. That's a believer, okay? So, but what you're going to be confused, a lot of people will. That's why I mean, I'm not going to I'm not gonna go around and just pick fights with them. I'm not, I'm not here to do that. I'm just telling you. It's like unequivocal fact there will be people who bridge in. And I think it's going to be very obvious. Like if this thing is up like 30x, People are going to be throwing in 100K, 500K. They will, man. They will. And they will be farming and stuff like that. They will be doing that. I hope I, I can't wait for us to see that. I think it's going to be very obvious when these people arrive. You'll be like, who the hell are these cabal people? Now, Sprinkles, let's look at this post from Richard Hart. It's about the peanut squirrel. So it says, nothing gets people to turn out to vote like murdering their pets, calling them Nazis and garbage, and calling the women around them weak. Please vote for Donald Trump now. He is, he'll make a positive impact on the economy and your freedom. He's the only president in history committed to protecting and enhancing your crypto. So Mark Cuban here, friends, he half-heartedly apologized after saying women around Trump are weak and dumb. And he says, I just can't nail every interview. So it's kind of also interesting about his perspective. Like uh, he cops some heat. He's like, you know, I can't nail any, any interview, uh, but it's, man, you gotta look. I know this is crazy. I know, friends. Mark Cuban, his popularity is very, very low. It's like all time low. Okay, he's like a Karen now. But uh, just have some respect for that attitude of life. You gotta respect that a bit. And it is his attitude of like, um, 
the interview was a game and they got him. Damn, they got me to say something and like, see what I mean? So what, that's how he's able to have this energy and keep doing it, right? He's, he's like, oh, he sees every interview as a game. He's like, oh yeah, some are good, some are bad. You win some, you lose some. That's how he's able to keep moving on. But uh, I think it's it's important to have that attitude. Oh, don't have his views. You don't have to have his Just have that attitude and that vibe, okay? If you get hit in a coin and around trips, okay, we've got to find the next one. Okay, not to swap around. We've got to stop looking for narratives and start looking for communities, which is really what we've done, you know. So I, I post these Richard Hart toasts because a lot of people are blocked by him as well. You also have Gainsy as well. Gainsy has written, if you vote for Kamala after she massacred Peanut, you literally have no soul. So um, Gainsy, friends, I'm going to show you this hilarious tweet he did. And uh, it's actually, it's it's right here. So let, let's go into it. He says, um, why the... Why the lawful execution of Peanut was justified. One out of 64, Adam Cochran. So this one's obviously got such a big, big, big banger. Um, yeah, because remember, like, Ad Adzi, friends, Adzi's been copping it hard because he's been, he's, he's, he's left, he's left, he's been, he's been uh, pretty much really doing anti-Trump stuff and, like, going after, going pro Kamala Harris. But all these, these types of political views, they're going to pretty much, they're going to end pretty soon. I'm going to show you some videos of the squirrel. So th this is why, look, friends, oh, uh, if you watch my interview with Stokesy, and to, to actually find it, if you go to my YouTube channel, you click on interviews, friends, click on interviews. Yo, so here, here is what? me with, here, you go down here, you got Stokesy. So this came out recently. In here, friends, we discussed, there's a lot of discussions here about, so Stokesy, very, very intelligent man, inquisitive. He asks about Donald Trump, politics, and the memes. You know what I mean? And the culture and how people remember him. And I, I tie in a lot of that. And it's really important for memetics because if you understand Donald Trump being popular, having mind share, no matter what he says, if you just understand that, you understand meme coins. Okay, they go hand in hand. And look at the memetics of the things coming out now, right? It's just, it's 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 attentions. It's attention out there. Now, when it comes to politics, there's no, like, there's no direct money for you and me besides bets and making, um, making bets on him. But when you have like something like this being shared now, listen to this. This is pe this is Peanut that was murdered. See, friends. So this is this is Peanut. So he's kissing the squirrel, squirrel, and then yeah. So um, this type of stuff because like now now even uh, Elon Musk is pretty much going after them. He said he shared this message. Let me show you, uh, Elon. Why is the Democrat Party so cruel? And then this guy, blue states seem to care more about euthanizing squirrels than arresting burglars and drug dealers. Okay, this is his wife crying. Poor thing, you have someone in the family. But then it also, also you have this guy going, good, squirrels did $5,000 worth of property damage to my house by chewing through some pipes. Blue states are focusing on the true menace. So uh, you still have Trump in the lead as well. It took a bit of a hit after this thing. I wonder if this thing turns around. And of course, there are meme coins. This is the meme coin thing I wanted to show you. A meme coin trader made 1.77 million profit on Peanut in just two days, okay? The trader started trading these meme coins in 15 days. So, yeah, man, they hit it big, I guess. Damn. They were just long and long and long, and then it just went big. So, I didn't know. He, he got in because of this. He got in because of this, and just the, the virality kept going. He believed. And look, it just say, hit, look, I, I never heard of it until now. I thought the meme coin came out like in 15 minutes. No, no, no. They're, uh, but they were already out. So, that's what... That, that kind of explains it now. People make memes about everything just in case one of them goes viral. Just in case. And look what happened, man. He hit 92 million market cap. He hit 92 million. This guy made like big, big, big money. He was like, imagine owning this. You understand, man. He had some balls. You got some balls because um, this thing at like 9 million market cap, okay, 9 million, which is down here, down here, it, he still believed, right? He still, but that's, friends, that, that's, that's that's rough. That's like that's, that's that's rough balls you got. Real, real rough, rough balls here. They um it makes me think about something like this. You actually see his numbers here. He bought 10k worth. Man. So he bet on it. That's it. Congratulations. He bet on the memetic and then it grew. It got super viral. Because when these things happen, they're not always just super fast flash in the pan. Like you gotta get in and then there's a bet to take. You have to hold through. But but man, you know if you got this wrong, friends, if you got this wrong. He would only have, like, imagine it stopped at 170K and then it round tripped. 
and it went all the way back and never went anywhere. Like he would have been on Coinfessions Rex saying, "Damn man, I, I made 170k, but I, I, uh, I round tripped it because I thought the squirrel was gonna take over the world." You know, but now he was right with this one. He was right, but now it's, it's going to entice people to do more gambling because people are betting on these memetics. Also, shout out to my friend Jay Plush. He made this amazing video, friends. Amazing video. This is cracker. I want to see Trump win. We're gonna win I want to so see much. Gary Gensler fight. Yeah, I want to see US taxes lowered. I want to see crypto. I want to see the US government have to talk about Bitcoin on their balance sheet. I want to see all the soy boy cucks capitulate. Good morning. So all of these things we want to see. You can just feel it, man. You can feel it. Society's hopefully it takes a turn for the better coming up front. Also, shout out to Mr. J Plush again with my bull hat. Big, big, big move for you, sir. And remember, pumpkins, you have to, you got to think about, if you're in a meme, you're in a community, not just meme, friends, old coins are memes, dude. And just to let you know, if you're holding a coin because of privacy, you're in a meme. You're in a meme, okay? They're all memes. They're all ideas. They are all. Now, you might say, oh, we need it for something, to do something. Yeah, people need stuff for dopamine as well, you know? Well, 33% of the internet is adult pornography. People need it for a dopamine hit. Literally 33%, okay? Premarital relations, fornicating, 33%. They're not getting any money from it. They're getting a dopamine hit. Okay, well, people get dopamine hits from communities too. They have a sense of belonging. People get like this underlying fulfillment in religions, like actual real religions of the world, the spirituality, see? So we belong. We go to the different teams. When people put on a jersey, of, of, of a soccer team or football team or basketball team. They feel like they belong. They're supporting. They're, they're in a bigger cause, okay? It's the same thing here. Um, but not all memes are going to make it. NNN, no nut November. No nut November just goes down to zero. So it was also funny. So one of my, we know somebody just got into this. It just, that's why it's just it's hilarious to me. This thing just going down to zero. We rugged, okay? So you think about the longevity of these memes. What's your thesis? And it's not just the thesis about the narrative that is yes you know more information better but you need the community man like if friends look at landwolf 615 landwolf 615 got vampire attacked like 10 times literally nine ten times vampire attacked constantly okay but when you're in it if you are here okay if you are accumulating in this this zone okay you are riding with a community that has refused to give up you see, Landwolf 615, like, refused to give up. Is the OG community that got rugged from the developers the first two times. Betrayal over and over and over again. Do you see how, friends, this, this goes beyond just a peppy narrative. You see? There's, there's no, 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 one, no one from the cabals in it. That's the type of stuff you want to look for. You want to basically be catering your capital towards things that have a good indication that people believe in it. For something greater than, like, you know, just a 2x or a 3x. But here's the thing, man, just be careful because everyone says they're in it for the long term. But you need, to, you need to see, like, people survive and thrive. Also, shout out to Mogapig. This is hilarious. The pump fund culture is awful. If you join their telegrams, all they talk about is all I need is a 2x. Oh, man, that's cold. Yes. So, yeah, that's actually hilarious, man. They actually talk about it. Oh, I just need a 2x. Yeah, they're, they're, just, they're a bunch of kids, man. They don't know, they don't know that. Uh, over time, you lose the slippage and the, you're circling a drain. There's less and less people willing to gamble with you. And then you realize the only way you make money is long-term punters. So long-term punters came and bought Soul up, made it, the whole ecosystem rich, and they all just gamble amongst themselves, okay? Um, it's the same thing that's going to happen on Polestone, by the way. So the people who keep their wealth, they're not continuously gambling, okay? But within the gamblers of the, the traders and all these other things, when, they, when people come in, you will hear those stories of people who crushed it. And that's what entices everybody to keep staying in the casino. It's like if the casino uh, turned off the lights every every 60 minutes in their casino and they put a disco ball and they go, hey, this guy just won a million dollars. And you just heard that all day. You think, oh, wow, this guy won a million and this guy won a million, this guy won a million. Yeah, but there could be like, you know, 150,000 people that have been punting, you know, online and, and at the casino and stuff. So you don't see that. You don't see that full perspective. I have the news here, friends, as well from... Uh, Dankrad Feist, an Ethereum developer, stepping down from the advisory role, as you mentioned before. So they paid him millions of dollars. Igon Layers, a typical VC insider project. Okay, they are restaking narrative. So as you see, I have decided to resign from my Igon Layer advisory. 
So he cites like conflict of interest and stuff. Uh, people in the comments are like, turn down millions of dollars to keep his focus on Ethereum. Legendary. Um, Patrick, I've been trying to rationalize this relationship. I think it was a conflict of interest. A coy, no disrespect to Igon. I think it makes sense for Igon to align with good people. Just a coy for you. Translation, at the current Igon price, the risk reward is not worth it. So that's another, yeah, that's actually true. That's actually true. But the guy goes, wait a minute, uh, the price for Igon, the token is down, you know, whatever, he's like 80%. He's like, oh, man, I thought I was going to be making, like, because that's what that happens, man. They, they pretend like they're, everyone's ruled by money, dude. It doesn't, we learn this from the scientists and the UFO tech friends that the scientists will change equations and scientific results just because they're getting paid, okay? Like, look at academia. Look at all the UFO stuff. Look at all the stuff that Ashton Forbes has been doing, showing that cold fusion's real, and all the scientists and all the academia has been lying to us for decades to get the public dumb, right? We know they're all paid. That's what Ethereum developers are. They're pretty much scientists themselves. Like, oh, you just get paid. You just get paid to say say one thing. So um, you may be wondering, like, why would he even give up now and do these things? Well, obviously, he got a call from Ethereum. Duh. But also, he's, he, he, I think he's got, like, maybe he's got, like, $2 million in free tokens, okay? He's probably thinking, oh, well, this thing, if it does a 10x, I've got $20 million. That's nice. That's a couple of mansions. It doesn't do a 10x, though it drops 80%. Now he's looking at his tokens and he's like, oh man, this thing's like 400K. And if I'm helping these guys, I gone, I'm actually ruining it for everyone by taking away from Ethereum to help everything grow. So he's like, oh, well, screw this 400K. I thought I was going to get 20 million. 400K is not that much. Eh, whatever, I'm not that motivated anyway. So he's just probably going to move on. I don't know if he's going to dump his tokens, but we'll see. By the way, he was joined by another guy, Justin Drake. Ethereum researcher Justin Drake said he's also given up his advisory layer, Igon, and left the ultrasound team and will turn down all advisory ships, <clears throat> angel investments, and security councils. He's optimistic 2025 will be a fantastic year. So, <clears throat> friends, I just Richard Hart was right, bro. The price matters the most. That's it. Because remember, and I was able to bridge this. Like, why does the price, why the green candle? Is it because if everyone out there, you want to listen. The price, we know from Metcalf's law, the more people join, the more it goes up. So when a price goes down, it's people leaving the country. They are. So you have a country, uh, if price goes down, it, people are emigrating out. They're leaving. They're exiting. Okay? They're exiting. If prices are going up, you have a lot of immigration into your network. Immigrating. People are joining. They're like, yes, that's great. We want more people to join. We want to get bigger. You get that? So that's why everyone only cares about getting more people, right? That's pretty much what it is. Until you hit full maturity stage at some self-sustaining level where you don't need more people to join. Maybe you're full, okay? But everyone's well, no one's there yet, right? In crypto because we're growing so much. Last thing, friends, now we're going to look at Judge Auntie Carol. Look at this amazing AI, man. Shout out to Just Mikey. Just Mikey Angela. Look how good that is, man. It makes her blink. How awesome is AI getting? What the hell? You would not know that's AI, friends. Whoa, man. Yes. My gosh, man. That's getting really, really good. It's like optimizing and optimizing. It's like it's getting closer and closer, just full on real. Like it's, it's, that looked through me. We had no idea. If you watch this again, man, where does the blockchain live? That's what pretty much that was. So if, so I saw Ivan, friends. Ivan, he read out my tweet on his show. Shout out to Ivan, Ivan the Great. And he, see, it's kind of, it's, friend, Ivan is so beautiful, friend. Ivan's in disbelief. He he was he did not know how we all knew about what the judge was saying and what was happening. Because he just if he just went to my tweet right before that, okay? He just read out one of my tweets. Like if he just went to my tweet before that, he thought I'm saying, oh, I confirmed all these things about, you know, Judge Auntie Carol, where does blockchain live? And she said Richard Hart can spend the funds. He's like, oh, but where are you getting this with this? Like we had literally an overflowing court. Overflowing court. 80 people rocked up. 80 people rocked up. The corrupt SEC tried to move it twice onto Halloween. 80 people rocked up. Overflowing court. Everybody was in there. They did emergency Twitter spaces right after emergency to tell everybody what was going on and how it planned out. We got every single quote, everything there. Like, everyone's on the ball. That's why I even made my video, friends, here. I made a video for Ranny Boo for Crypto Banter um, telling him, hey, I have a high-value alpha trade for your Crypto Banter audience. We were in the court. Basically, obviously, I wasn't in the court, but everyone's in the court, friends. We have direct information. The judge was extremely favorable 
to Richard Hart against the Crop This Easy. Extremely, pretty much all these positive points that we put in, extremely favorable. And um, and that's an opportunity because the market hasn't woken up to that yet because they, they, they're still pricing in death. They're still pricing in, okay, everything's going to disappear for the chain. And Pulse Chain PLS is only, man, it fans, it's only, look at this. It's only 778 million market cap, man. It should be in the multiple billions. That's why, like, they can get a free 2.8x, a free 2.8x on their money just to get back to break even from the three years ago price. So, um, Judge Auntie Carroll was amused at the corrupt SEC's inability to answer the question, where does the blockchain live? So this is your friendly reminder that the market has not yet sufficiently priced in Richard Hart victory against the corrupt SEC. The pulse is only 750 million market cap, right? It should be closer to 5 billion. So that's around 7x higher. So the court went very well. Richard Hart's lawyers are confident of a dismissal pending six days. They're very confident of that. However, though, like... If it's if if they do have jurisdiction and they go for the next phase, okay, so so be it, so be it. You know who cares? Um, everyone's winning the fight. Um, so that picture, right? She's well hearsed. This picture, this is amazing. Okay? She is well hearsed in blockchain tech. Man, that's that's very important. So make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, and all. Tell mum and dad you love them. Catch you in the next one.